Your attitude can make or break a dating situation or a relationship. It can make a guy want to run away from you or it can make him want to run towards you. It can make you stand out from the crowd or it can make you seem like you're like all the other women that are out there. It can make him feel like he's bored with being around you or it can make him feel addicted or even obsessed with thinking about you and being around you and wanting to be connected with you. Your mindset is very, very important when it comes to dating and being in a relationship with a man and keeping him attracted to you and making him fall in love with you and making him want to be around you. And we'll talk about why and exactly what kind of a mindset you want to have it just here in this video right now. <laughs> my name's Matthew Coase and welcome to my channel. Okay, so five mindsets. So what this all boils down to is this. Men, when they're around you, they're not going to remember everything that happens. They're not going to remember everything that's said. They're not going to remember everything. They will remember one thing though. And that's how you make him feel when he's around you. And so it's very important that if you want him to feel like he wants to be around you more often, that you connect with him in a way that makes him feel really good when he's around you. And so how do you do that? Let's talk about the mindsets. Mindset number one is having fun. This is an attitude of just being a positive source of emotion for him. So don't think that you're the only one that should be fun, right? Like you want to both have fun on both sides of the table, right? A lot of times women come to me and they're like, why do I have to be the one doing all this stuff? Well, you shouldn't want to be with a guy that's not also attractive and interesting and doing all these things, right? Uh, you should only want to be with a guy who is doing those things and creating a positive environment with you because if you both aren't creating positive emotions within each other, what's going to happen is it's going to destroy the relationship from the inside out. So there's a, a company out there called the Relationship Research Institute, and they are one of the forefront leaders on doing relationship research in tons of different areas of dating and relationships. And they've determined very, very accurately how to figure out if a couple is going to stay together or break up. And what they found is that you need five times as many positive interactions as negative ones. Minimum. That's the minimum amount. If you want to stay together as a couple long-term. And if you drop below that, they, they have determined that your relationship will end. And so you want to have great positive emotions when you're around each other, having fun and being playful is really how you trigger love. Love is not, it's not boring. It's not cold. It's not arguments. It's not, you know, trying to create reactions in him so that he'll give you attention. It's none of those things. It's being playful with each other and connecting with each other and having fun with each other. Being cold and fighting is how you destroy the love that exists. So the best way to do this is to start within yourself. So get in the habit of finding things that you can appreciate. Cause sometimes we have women, they're like, well, you know, I'm, I'm just in this bad attitude and all these things. And, and a lot of those things, like if you do it a lot, we get into habits where we live in kind of emotional states all the time. And so a lot of people, they'll live in angry states or they'll live in resentful states or they'll live in depressed states. And that's not who they are. It's just a pattern that they're in. And so look at your life and what kind of emotions you feel on a regular basis and determine if that's how you want to live your life. And if it's not, then break that pattern and create a new pattern. And one of the best ways to do that is to start with appreciation and just appreciating things about yourself initially. That's one of the best things to do is find things that you appreciate and you value about yourself. The best definition I've heard about appreciation is comes from economics and it says to raise the value of something. And so when you raise the value of something, you start enjoying it immediately. And so you want to appreciate yourself. You want to raise the value of yourself 
to yourself. That way you start enjoying yourself. You start loving yourself. You start caring more for yourself. You want to start appreciating your life, start appreciating the moments and the, the little experiences that you have in your life. Cause you can, I mean, there's so many great things going on and there's, there's so many challenges in the world and, and the world is constantly trying to grab our attention and focus us on the negative things. But in reality, there's so many things that we could feel blessed for. I mean, just right now being connected to each other right here on the internet, being able to talk to each other and learn from each other. And, you know, just all this technology and our ability to connect with other people and learn how to be better people and just everything. I mean, there's so many things that we can be grateful for the connections and the friends and the family that we have our connections to ourselves, our ability to learn and, and be intelligent and, and so many different things. I'm not going to run off on a tangent of that, but just break the old patterns. If you have negative patterns that are keeping you stuck in negative mindsets, break those and add positive patterns that help you connect. So number two, let's talk about my nine, mindset. Number two is being interesting. So people pay attention to things that are interesting. If you're interesting to him, he'll pay attention to you and he'll keep paying attention to you. When I was younger, I had the express privilege, I guess I'd call it of spending time in nightclubs. And you always knew when there was something interesting going on in a nightclub because everybody would turn their heads and start looking at it, right? So we pay, we pay attention to things that are interesting. And so you might be thinking now, but Matt, how is this an attitude or a mindset? That's a great question. And let me answer it right now. It's, it's a great way. Um, it's a mindset because it's, you, you can be interesting by being interested in the topic that you're talking about, or you can be interested in the topic that somebody else is talking about. So just finding topics that you love to talk about or things that you find interesting or appreciating the things that you are a talk, you are talking about and, and, and making it more valuable to yourself. Or if he's talking about something, just being curious and appreciating what it is that he's talking about can make you interesting as well, right? Just having this mindset of being interested in things can make you a lot more interesting. Another way to be interesting is to step into your own polarity and pushing him into his polarity. And the most common polarities that we talk about, polarity is a really important thing because it creates passion in a relationship. The more polarity there is there, the more there's like uncertainty, which drives kind of this attention, which creates passion. And so uh, I, I talk about masculine feminine polarity because that's, that's one of the most common ones that, that people want to use in our community, but there are other kinds. But what you want to do if you want to step into your feminine polarity is to just get connected with yourself and your emotions and start responding to what's going on from a feminine place and allow yourself to start feeling. Just take a moment and just, and just pull yourself out of whatever's going on and just spend a moment just feeling your hands or feeling the clothing on your skin or just paying attention to your heartbeat or just feeling the feelings that are inside your body and just connecting with it, right? That's a great way that you can start getting connected with your emotions and start feeling and responding and then connecting to a man through that. That's a great way to do that. And uh, shift what you focus on to what you're feeling, shift your focus to yourself and to what you're feeling and then connect to a man through that. And it's a really, really powerful way to be interesting because for guys, when he experiences that and he sees that it's going to be different than what he normally experiences and sees, especially on a date or in a relationship. And it's really powerful. You can talk to some of the women in our community. It being in their feminine has completely changed a lot of women's lives in our community and changed their relationships and, and recreated passion in the relationship. So it's a really powerful thing to do. Mindset number three is confidence. So owning yourself and who you are is the best form of confidence in terms of connecting with a man. And so what are we talking about here? A lot of women come to me talking about how they're like walking on eggshells, right? They're like trying to send the perfect text to him. And, you know, am I going to laugh at the right time? Or wait, maybe I shouldn't have laughed right then. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to send that. Right. And it's just like, 
oh my God. And they're scared of doing the wrong thing. And that's the opposite of where you want to be. You want to be in this kind of a carefree kind of mindset, a, a high value mindset, a mindset, a pattern of a high value woman, right? And uh, what is that kind of a mindset? It's it's a mindset of qualification. It's a qualification frame, right? Is he impressing me instead of am I impressing him? Or it's also kind of just owning yourself and just not being worried about impressing him because you know your value and your worth. We've talked a lot about knowing your value and your worth on this channel. So, um, you can watch some of the other live streams or, or join some of my events or get some of my programs if you're more interested in some of those things. But uh, a woman who is really confident, usually she really just knows her value. She's confident in her value and her self-worth. And part of that is shifting your belief systems. But part of it's also making sure that you know that you're a good catch, right? Part of confidence comes from knowing that you're a good partner to be with in a relationship, not from like a cocky narcissistic. I don't really believe it, but I'm going to tell myself it all the time, kind of a place, but just knowing that you add a lot of value to, to a man's life and just connecting with him and bringing him value as a human being. And just knowing that you have intrinsic value as a human being and connecting through a lot of those things. So that instead of trying to impress him and walking on eggshells and trying to send him all the right text messages and stuff, you're coming from a confident place because that's how a high value person does it, right? They come from a confident place there. If you go and talk to, you know, rock stars and, and uh, presidents and people that are in high value positions who, who know that they're kind of high value people, they're not running around, you know, like constantly questioning whether they're doing the right thing or not. They're, they're confident in what they're doing. Yeah. They want to do the right thing and they're growing themselves and they're developing their skills and abilities and ability to connect with other people and doing the right thing. But they're also confident in their own value and who they are and knowing that they're a worthy, worthwhile human being. And that's the place that you should be coming from. If you really want to connect with a man in a really powerful way where he sees you as somebody who's different than all the other women that he typically meets in his life. So can you see how being confident might be a great attitude to have when approaching dating or being in a relationship? Number four is softness. So softness is kind of this feminine quality that men really, really crave. And, and the best way to kind of look at it is a lot of women talk to me about masculine strength, right? Like a man being really like a strong man, right? Strong in himself, strong in his body, strong in his beliefs, strong in who he is as a person. Well, that same attraction that you might have for a strong man is what men are attracted to around softness, right? So when we get around softness, it's, it's like this kind of like thing where we're just, it, it like mm, kind of just sucks us in and makes us feel just so, uh, like, I don't, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's kind of just like almost like, um, two planets, you know, like one being in orbit and just kind of like pulls that other planet in and then you're just like sucked into it and you're just like, Oh man, I just want to be around this woman. And it's just so interesting. And I just, I love every moment of it. Right. And I've, I've heard guys describe it as I just want to run over and just, you know, make love to her soul. Right. So that's kind of the thing that you're looking for. Masculine masculinity is hard. Femininity is soft. And so how do you do this from a practical standpoint? One standpoint is touch. This is a really, really powerful one. Actually my favorite one, my primary love language is, is, uh, is physical touch. And so I love touch and, and touching and everything about touching. I love it. And if you want to touch a man, you can do it in very soft ways and very subtle ways and just, you know, touching his hand, if, if, you know, you're just kind of getting to know each other or, you know, touching him on his, his arm, or if you're kind of getting closer to him or you want to get closer to him, touching him maybe on the back of his head or, you know, on his neck or even right here on his chest and just touching him in soft ways is a really, really powerful thing that you can do with a man. And it connects him to that softness of yours and it can just make men melt when you're doing that. And so what's another way? Another way is uh, compassion coming from a space of compassion. So 
feeling what well, compassion is really like feeling for him and where he is and what he's doing and how he is in his life. And so it's kind of a difficult thing to describe in a lot of ways, but what it really is, is feeling deeper, right? It's going deeper beyond the surface of I'm smiling, you're smiling, we're on a date and everything's happy and feeling deeper into what's going on, uh, listening for what's not being said and feeling what's not being said. And I know that's going to sound kind of abstract and esoteric, but it's, it's kind of connecting with another person's soul and feeling who they are and what's going on with them. And it's a really powerful way when you kind of learn how to do that. And I, I've noticed a lot of women can do that. Some women are, they haven't developed that ability, but it's something that you can do just connecting with your own emotions and then connecting with what you're feeling around, right? What, who are you like connecting with the feelings of different things that are around you and just connecting with those things. And if you kind of do it often, you can build it into a habit so that you're doing it more and more and you can feel it more and more. And it can be really, really powerful in terms of softness and connecting to a man, because when you connect to a man like that, he can drop deeper into his emotions. And then all of a sudden he'll feel like a real soul level connection with you instead of kind of feeling the surface level connection that he gets with most people in the world 99% of the time in his entire life. And so that can be a really, really powerful way to connect with men. Number five is flexibility. So think about dating like a dance and dating in relationships are like a dance. And just, if you haven't done it before, go and watch partner dancing, even go to like a live partner dancing event. If there's any in your area and things are open right now, go and just spend some time and just watch people dancing or watch videos on the internet about people dancing and just see kind of the interaction of how things are going there. There's almost always in partner dancing, there's always a leader and there's always kind of this follower. And if he's a masculine man and you want a masculine man, he's going to want to lead, which means that you're going to be following, which doesn't mean that you're not doing anything or that you, you know, let him walk all over you or any of that kind of stuff. Right. And we're going to clarify that here in a, in a second. So how do you create flexibility? Another great question. Glad you're asking it. <laughs> Let's talk about it here. So focus on what you can control. So a lot of women get upset if things don't go their way. And so they can get really upset about things and then ruin things with a man, ruin the connection with a man by getting really upset. And sometimes this can work if a guy's a really low self-esteem guy and you're getting upset all the time and he's like, Oh, you know, it's like pushing him back and forth through these different emotions and that can kind of make him obsessed. But if he's a healthy guy, he's going to look at that and be like, eh, I don't want anything to do with that. And it's going to ruin your connection. And usually the reason that a lot of women do this actually stems from insecurities that they have or feelings of lack of control in their life. And so what you want to start doing is finding where you have control in your life and start focusing, get it hyper focus on things that you have control of and block out everything that you don't have control of. So the world's constantly trying to shove information in our faces about things that we have no control over, like the weather and politics and, you know, who's fighting who and what's going on over there and all these different things. And my suggestion is that you ignore anything that you don't have control over and start focusing in your life on things that you do have control over. And eventually you'll feel a lot more in control and you won't need to feel like you need to do things to get control if you're in control most of the time. And the other way to do this, if that was a little bit too abstract for you, is <laughs> here's another abstract idea, is trusting yourself. And if a man's gonna lead an interaction, you may not be able to trust it. I'll just go ahead and say that. If you're out there dating, there may be some men that you meet out there that you can't trust and you don't know if you can trust them or not, especially in the inner like initial stages of dating and before you've really learned what his patterns are and things like that. And so what you want to do instead is start learning to trust yourself, trust your intuition, trust that you will do the right thing. 
And so you, it, it's, it's kind of a process to do that, right? Like learning how to trust your intuition, learning how you interact in different situations, and then figuring out how to trust yourself and the patterns that you're in or breaking the old patterns you're in and creating new patterns that are healthier that you can trust. And if you're in a place though, that you can trust yourself, then if a man tries to overstep your boundaries, you can trust that you'll protect yourself. You can trust that you'll do what is in your best interest. You can trust that you won't put yourself into bad situations where you might end up getting hurt or doing something that you'll regret later on. And once you start doing that, you'll start to trust yourself. And then eventually you'll be able to see what's going on with a guy. And over time you can trust him. And through that entire interaction, you can allow him to lead and you can follow but at the same time, making sure that you're taking care of yourself and protecting yourself. And so I'm going to go over the different things we talked about, the five different attitudes or mindsets. Again, remember, you know, all this stuff boils down to one thing and it's men won't remember everything you say, but they will remember how you make them feel. So number one is have fun. Number two is being present or being interesting. Number three is being confident. Number four is softness. And number five is flexibility.